Hey everyone, Nathan Nerdark here from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds, and today I'm going to be talking about my fifth edition, Psionics and Psychic Warriors, Psychic Well and Drams. And for those of you who don't know what Psychic Well is, because you've never heard of it before, the Psychic Well is my version of the power pool for Psionics for fifth edition. So basically, it's a kind of metaphoric place where the, your power has begun or starts inside of your your mind and body. So Psychic Well is going to have two different, uh, several different ways to get it to happen. So it's kind of like your origin story for your psionics. Uh, they've had different things like Wilders and just a general psionicist and each one of those were like the contemplative master for the psionist, general psionicist and then you also had the Wilder which was just like you just have this, you have no training. And I just decided to do away with uh, and worked on personal presence and charisma rather than willpower. And I think uh, I just want to standardize it. Everything is will. Everything is willpower. And what you have is um, you have the contemplative master who goes, might have some kind of talent for psychic phenomena and, you know, knows what people are going to say next or might know what's happening, you know, down the stream somewhere in the next town, uh, down the river, down in the next town. But they, they say, hey, you have some talent for this. Maybe we should send you to the monastery. And you're also kind of creeping us out. So how about you go to the monastery? <laughs> So they send their kid to the monastery to be trained by uh, psychic warriors and the psionic masters. And, you know, through the years, he slowly, uh, the, the junk and detritus in between, you have people in between these two, not people, you have junk and, you know, hang-ups and all kinds of issues in between the meditative guy at the top and his psychic well at the bottom. So he's slowly over the years through meditation, trance, and exercises, you know, like standing on waterfalls and putting, carrying very heavy rocks and all this kind of different physical and mental training. On the physical side of this training, you have this exertion of uh, energies and basically endurance. And what that is, is you're pushing your body past the limits of what it can do. And also, you know, st standing or sitting for hours and hours just thinking about the universe and your place in it and kind of, you know, gaining some kind of intuitive understanding of where you are and where you're going. Uh, that slowly excavates out this um, hole for your well into this, you know, going through all your the barriers that are in between you on the surface of you know your conscious mind and the well hidden within your mind. So, as you go through this process, you're getting to the well, and then you get to it and you gain psionic powers. And you know you're going to shore up that well. You're going to put blocks, block by block. You're going to create this kind of intellect tower, this tower of will inside your mind. Uh, where you can easily just have all the sonic power stored and have it fill up and uh, take little drams or drinks from it as as you want and as you need to. And then, you know, at, every day that'll get filled back up to whatever your capacity is for the depth of your well. And <clears throat> you, can, excuse me, you can go back and do it again and do whatever else you've learned how to do and whatever else you've created with your psionic circuitry and psionic, your, your psychic conduit. Now, that's the contemplative master, you know, thinking about the universe direct, uh, route. And that could be your origin story as a psionicist, uh, as a psychic. But there's the other side of that, which is the instantaneous... Uh, transformation or the instantaneous explosive excavation of that well so that is going to be your more like wilder feel like where you're a, you're a uh, man or woman and your village is being destroyed or your child is being attacked and you're like I've got to do something and I got to do something about this right now and you have this upswelling of power as if 
the well is trying to burst forth. And instead, you just were reaching for whatever you could, grabbing whatever you could get a hold of, and you excavated your well, in a sense. You could, so that's kind of like the imagery of you just like blasting a hole down to where your psionic power is and reaching in and just grabbing whatever drink you can, whatever drams you can gain. So that's the way I see the psionic powers developing in someone as a wild talent or, you know, wild talent. You could also be the contemplative master where you kind of stink and you're like, well, I went to school for this, but I'm lame at it. And wild talent is, you know, going to be similar to um, magic initiate as a feat. Uh, you can take it at first level or whenever you get it. And basically, if your powers have, your psionic ability has developed enough that you've gained a first level ability and some cantrips. And I mean, the cantrips are good, but, you know, you're not ever going to get very far with your level of skill. And maybe that'll go further and you'll say, well, I'm, uh, I've got this magic initiate and then I'm going to go further and further and get more, more and more powerful. But realistically, as it is right then, you could just be... I've developed this, I tried the skill and it didn't work out for me. Uh, or I went a different way and I've had some training in it. But with uh, the more instantaneous transformation from mundane person to scientist, you have this explosive growth and, uh, and reaching for this well. And it's kind of rough and it's kind of like just blasting a hole in the ground to get to the sonic power well. Uh, but you can use it, and you, you use it uh, very um, instinctually uh, through your intuition. And that is how you get about still using a wisdom score, but for the, for the power set for both, the, the, both origin stories. So you have the sonic master, uh, contemplative master, and then you have the kind of more like spur of the moment uh, wild talent that could develop further, and those are both those are both as if you know they're the same they're the same class. I didn't change anything. They don't have different power sets. They just have come to it from two different directions. Be kind of it, they made wizard and sorcerer different because you have to have them different. Because a wizard has all this book learning and studying and developing of formula, uh, and it's just a lot of book learning and a lot of reading and a lot of time, while a sorcerer is innately magical in some fashion. Well, there's no, there's no innate psionics in the sense of there's no... It's just like the difficulty it took you to get to where you are. So could the guys that have the sonic power manifest just when he needs it? Uh, yeah, that's really fortunate for him, but he would have probably been more better off. He would have been better off having that sonic power manifest years ago or, you know, trained to have it occur. Um, could the contemplative master said, hey, cash in my 10 years of study and just put me in a dangerous situation where I might either die or have this power. Well, you know, no one gets put in a dangerous situation on purpose just to try and see if they manifest any powers. At least not anybody that I know or would talk to or stand next to. That's just kind of crazy. <laughs> so, in either case, you have this, you know, this vast difference in origin, but it's the same class. And there's no reason to make it two different classes or two different ability scores or anything like that. So that's kind of why I went with, why I went with just the psychic well being wisdom and not any other stat. And what else do I want to talk about here? Well, the drams. Okay, so drams are basically an amount of drink. Um, tends to be associated with alcohol, but hey, I mean, you're doing sonic power, so... You know, it's going to be strong, but it doesn't, you know, a dram, a drop, a drink, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's basically, first off, really important thing, it's not PPs because it's not sonic power points or power points or anything like that, which I always dislike that naming of it. And it has more of a going away from numbers and going more towards like an unknowable, quasi-knowable unit of measurement. 
I really don't, didn't know what the measurement was, and I didn't really bother to fixate on that because that's not really the point. The point is it's some kind of amount, and that amount, does it need to be measured? No. So I'm trying to get the actual in-game terms away from, kind of standardize them and have them be away from the idea of, well, your psychic well is your spell pool, and you have 150 points in your spell pool. I was like, no, well, your psychic well has this much power to it, and you could associate a number with it, 150, uh, but it's 150 drams. So it gets you out of that mode of, well, what's, well you'd be like, well, what's a dram? Well, it's not a point. Uh, and though it is uh, behind the scenes, it's not in the game. So you, I mean, you can talk about it in a non-point system. So you can say like 10 drams rather than 10 psionic points. Um, and I, it's not a big deal to some people, but it, it was a big enough deal to me that I didn't want them to have them called psionic points. So I've got that lingo for, you know, psychic well and drams. And um, got the backstory that can fit really any type of character that you want to create that has that, you know, either there was a tragic, tragic backstory, tragic backstory, where they have, um, you know, the classic, my family was killed and I barely survived because I killed the goblin with some kind of crazy, arca you know, arcane sonic power. Uh, or you have the guy that says, well, I went off into the woods as a hermit. Or I went off to be a contemplative master at some uh, university for scions, psionics, uh, some monk school that you're kind of the odd man out because you physically stink at all the things they're trying to show you, but you gain some insight and, and wisdom from, from the things they showed you. And so you went off and just thought about things for a while, and then you develop psionic powers. Or you could have go to where it's like a school like for psionics, and you're just going at it until it happens. So you might never have psionic powers. And that's another thing. It's not that everybody that has psionic powers are able to develop it. It's that uh, everybody that has psionic powers are one of the people that could have developed it. So uh, it's, it's in you, it's in everybody to be a psionicist, but some people just don't have the potential to be a decent sound assist, even to the point of having a cantrip. So it's kind of like everybody has some insight and wisdom that seems beyond norm, uh, or that they've kind of pulled out of thin air in a way, uh, but to have it reliably uh, to, at the psionic level, at the psychic level, is something completely different. And um, that's where that development comes in. So if, several different origin stories, vastly different by either having years of meditative study or happening instantaneously out of need. Both cases, all cases, there's going to be it's going to be will that's going to be driving it. So with that, like, comment, subscribe. If you have anything that you'd like to add or you'd like to go check out what's going on with my homebrew psionics, you can check it out at nerdarchy.com. Uh, you know, have a good day, evening, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and remember, stay nerdy. <laughs>